are you all doing? Welcome back to the YouTube channel. It's your favorite village boy, Mr. Ghana Baby, right here. And I just want to tell you guys something. Whether you like it or not, moving to Africa is now a movement. <laughs> And it's so exciting to see that most of them that move to the continent actually add value to the continent. You all should meet Jerry, who moved from America to Ghana to establish an ancestral wall with the aim of educating Africans and Africans in the diaspora. And he's doing all these things out of his own pocket. <laughs> yeah, but it's affordable to come in here. It's free. Okay? Oh, like even to today. Oh, it's free. Now, it's free of charge. Can you believe it? You don't think a selfless man like this deserves our financial support? Well, we've calculated that to finish that resource center because it's two levels, library, everything, it's going to be about forty thousand dollars. So I think I'm going to use my channel to raise twenty thousand wow. dollars, which means that we've taken half of your wow. burden off, right? That would. You, please, you guys should not disappoint me. Oh. Oh. This year is the year of charity, and whatever he has been doing here, he has been doing it out of charity. And if I'm here, we have to make it possible. The GoFundMe page is going to be in the uh, description box. It has nothing to do with me. The team will create it, all the money will go to, into his bank account. And please, when the money comes, let us know. I'm going to come back here, and then you tell us that, okay, this is the money that you got, and what am I never took a dollar. What am I's brother? No, you die. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey. How are you? Fine. Nice yes, just to see you in person. Oh. I tell you. This is me. What am I? How did you go to know what Amaya? Emma. From the videos. From the videos? The many, many videos. Yes. And what do you think about the videos? Excellent. It gives such an overview of not just Ghana, but the whole continent. And it's wonderful for the exposure, the information. Great. Great. Really nice meeting you. Mm -hmm. Nice meeting you. Wow. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Your mom forced you to come to Ghana with her? <laughs> her Mama Vera, of course you have met Mama Vera. Yeah. And um, she's my mother on this side of the water. <laughs> That's beautiful. Yes, yeah, so she has in, uh, embraced me like a daughter. That's beautiful. But yes, it's wow. been great here. How long We've have been, you been here. here? I celebrated my birthday and a year anniversary last Sunday. Last Sunday? Mm -hmm. So I'll say a happy anniversary to Thank you. you. <laughs> and uh, I hope you're not going to leave us anytime soon. Oh no, we're the entertainment. How does it feel being in here, man? It feels good. I wouldn't want to be nowhere else. You don't
don't regret being here? No, I love being here. Why would I regret being home? Wow. Why would I regret it? Do you know that I've heard about the ancestral world for so long and this is my first time of coming in here? Oh, you're welcome. And you know who brought me here? Why do you want me to be here though? Because I was so moved when I heard about the ancestral wall that I met Jerry and that was my most favorite place to be. I live down the street and I spend my weekends here at the wall with Jerry and I'm going to do all I can to support him and his resource center. I'm uh, donating my entire library that I bought back from DC to his resource center. So here I am. I, I just, I'm a fan of Jerry and Obama, so I want to do all I can. If Mama Vera is supporting Brother Jerry, then I guess we all need to support him. You know what we need to do? First of all, like the video, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and share this video. Send this video to your friends and family. Let them get to know what this man single-handedly done in here. My brother, my name is Watermaya, yes. the one and only annoying village boy from Ghana. <laughs> the village boy. The vill <laughs> hey, we've been following you. you. Really? No, you don't know. I mean, the inspiration. Uh, so many people are doing things you don't even know they're doing because they've seen you. It's so true, isn't it? It is. But well, people know who watch I'm you. I'm in Ghana they know because it. of what And the I doctor is. we just talked to, he yeah. says, yeah. I'm here because of what am I? I the the I, one we just talked just to, you talk met to, him. Yeah, I actually met the doctor. He uh -huh. said he did a video at this hospital mm -hmm. and I decided to move from America and come and work there. I mean, that was so touching. Yeah. And listen, this video is not about me. No. This video is about you. Well, it's and about I want, us. What uh, we're about, trying to do, because we're on the same page. When did you move to Ghana? Actually, 2004. 2004, I've been here quite a long time. 2004? Yes, I was, in fact, I was one of the very first people to be in uh, New Ningo, this side of Prom Prom. Yeah, this was all bush when I came. So. I feel like um, every African-American wants to be in Ningo Prom Prom. <laughs> if you don't go to, if you're not staying in Cape Coast, you're staying in uh, Ningo Prom Prom. Why, you guys love this place so much? Well, I think for some of us, I, I mean, I'm from Los Angeles, you know, and even though I lived in a place called Long Beach, if you are uh, most black folks in Long Beach never see the beach. Yeah. <laughs> so when we come to a place like this and we can have a nice ocean view and the breeze and feel free, I mean, I don't know how you can resist it. That's, that's beautiful. Yeah. Um, so which means we are born and raised in America. Yes. But you know, America is the land of milk and honey to most Africans. Ah. Uh, oh, oh I, I don't like that reaction. Ah, what does that mean? Is it not true though? No, it's true. I mean, I've been here, I've been coming to Ghana since 1994. So it is true that that is what people see. Uh, but a lot of that is, of course, media, you know. If you go there, it's a, a different reality. I understand why a lot of people go there for financial, you know, for schooling or this kind of thing. But just in terms of being a, a black man and being in a free space, uh, it's very difficult to be that in the U.S. as, though, as you can be here in Africa anywhere. You know, I've been to most West African countries and it's the same thing. We have our challenges, but in the end of the day, uh, you're in a black man in a black country. And that means more than almost anything. Well, oh, Vera, you, you think America is the land of milk and honey? Well, what you heard from me was, um, I grew up under segregation, I'm older than he is. The Supreme Court decision in 1954 directly impacted me. So I was the first grader walking to school and, I had, and white mothers would run out uh, of their yards and stand by the gate or stand in their door and call me a nigger and I was five years old. And so they didn't see the humanity in me. All they saw was a little enemy, you know. How I threatened them, I never know. But what, what I, once I became an adult, I thought these women acted like that was their civic duty to call me a nigger. I'm five years old, you know. 
So after they did all of that, they went about their day. They probably fixed somebody's lunch and vacuumed their, their carpet and watched TV. And every day I walked past their house and they wanted to make sure they terrorized me every, every day, only for me to go to school and be the only little black girl in my classroom Ooh. and have the teacher not to call on me. Oh. And I'm hope I'm raising my hand and asking Miss Ahern, I remember her name, her name was Mary Ahern, asking her to call on me because I knew the answers because both of my parents were school teachers and 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 seven of my aunts and uncles, so I was pretty well versed in the first grade. She hasn't called on me yet, well am I? I'm seventy three years old. That woman's <laughs> never called on me. And your hand me. is still up. Never called on me, but she, this is how this is what she how she traumatized me. She wrote letters home to my mother and pinned them on my clothes. I had to walk around school all day with a big note on me that I was disruptive, I was talkative, and, and I was an annoyance in the classroom. Wow. We are here at the African Ancestral Wall, and uh, I just want to ask, you came to Ghana just to design this? Oh, no, no. Actually, I was uh, living in uh, Kwabinya, Dome area, yeah. even though I had built this small house here. And uh, I was there purposely to be around Legon because, you know, we had all of our videos, all of our books, all of our resources. So I spent quite a bit of time at the university there talking to the students, yeah. African history, Pan-Africanism, you know, all of these things. They yeah. used on the radio a few times. But I realized that, um, you know, by the time you get to a certain age, like the age of the students at Legon, um, you know, they are kind of oriented toward getting out of the country or getting the connection or, you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm more interested in, you know, what we can imbue inside of the people. So I realized we had to go younger and younger. So what I started doing, I started going to the schools of the younger students out here. And uh, after going in so long, I decided logistics are a problem. You know, there's so many schools, it's so hard to get to. That I, and it came to my mind, since I had this nice space here, mm. to plaster the whole wall and then put the ancestors on the wall and then bring the students here. So for instance, last week I had a group of 75, uh, I had a group of 30 something students, you know, that had come headmasters bring. So that's easier and better because the teachers are motivated when they bring them here. Mm. And then the children, even the last group, even though they were three, four, five, six, seven, they still get something out of seeing these Africans on the wall because if nothing else, they know they are important. Who fits to be on the wall? Well, who fits to be on the wall? It, well, really it depends on what I'm trying to tell the students. Mm. So I'm looking for attributes of different Africans, some which are well known, some which are very uh, almost unknown, only because there's certain things I would like to tell the students. Mm. So it may have something to do with courage, they have something to do with leadership, organizational potential, or strength. It may have something to do with uh, creativity, brilliance, warriorship, all of these types of things. So I look, I've kind of taken these attributes and then I map different people against them. So when I bring the children through, they get some of everything. So you'll see some people that you don't know and then some of the people you expect to see, you may not see them because maybe there's three or four other people who have really shown that attribute strong enough but I have a lot of walls so we'll continue you know what I love about this you're talking about African ancestral wall but I'm seeing people that were born in the diaspora of African descent so are you gonna say that every black man living both on the continent and out of the continent is an African if you're a black man you're an African but there's this narrative that we are not Africans we who I mean like I've seen it before I've had conversations with people that were born in the diaspora. I mean, black people that were right. born in the diaspora, right. saying that don't call me an African. Well, there, there's a lot of confusion. I mean, just like the media makes everything here in America look like paradise, the media there makes Africa look like uh, a very bad place to be. I hate to admit it, I was a reasonably good student, but I was 20 years old before I ever saw a picture of a building in Africa. So this is what we grew up with. Now, Malcolm X told us something that I think we should keep in mind. He said, we are all Africans. And then people said, no, no, we're not Africans. He said, look, if a cat, cat has, kittens has kittens in, in an oven. oven, that does not make them biscuits. In other words, 
<laughs> if, you, if you're a cat and you have kittens, it doesn't make any difference where the kittens are born. Even in kittens. an oven, they're, still, they're still not biscuits. They're kittens. So we're Africans, no matter where you're born, no it's still the same. Now, whether you want to accept it or embrace it, that's a social issue that has to do with, you know, uh, how we are socialized there and even here. What are some of the things that you heard about Africa before coming? Well, one thing that's really struck me is I had an atlas with a picture in every country. And every country showed me cities, every country showed me towns. And every country in Africa was either a village, a hut, a river, or animals. You know, so what do you expect our children, you know, who, who's trying to get involved with that? Now that you've been in Africa, what do we say about Africa? Oh, Africa is the future of black people. Period. Period. You know, I was in the U.S. Look, in the U.S., blacks don't have the population, they don't have the resources, nor do we have the land. So if you don't have the population, the resources, and the land, you're never going to be in charge, and you will always be at the mercy of the people who do. But here in, God, in Africa, we have the population, obviously, we have the resources, clearly, and we have the land. Now, maybe we're not doing what we should be doing with it. Maybe we're not, you know, there's a lot we need to be doing. But the ingredients of, for sovereign nationhood is there. So, so we have to, uh, you know, we have to recognize the difference in between potential, which is here, and what's there is mainly hope. How long has this answer show all been in existence? Well, we started this one in 2017, yeah. 20, even though I've been here a long time, that's why I said I was trying different techniques until it came to me, uh, what, five or six years ago, that this could actually be a good teaching aid for the youngsters. I never had tourism in mind, to be honest with you. It never even crossed my mind. It was just, can I get a tool? Because it's free for the children. Of course, it's free for the tourists. And, um, you know, what, what could be effective? And then later on, people started coming, and then that's when it dawned on me, okay, well, other people are interested. But this is really still today for the students. If I get a, a, several students here now, I'll say, you guys have to wait. My customers are in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's affordable to come in here. It's free. It's oh, like, even to today? Oh, it's free, no. of, it's free of charge. It's always free of charge. That's the whole point. We're not, we're trying to teach our children. So you can't ask our children for no, money. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not even talking about the children. I'm talking about like an ordinary citizen or maybe a foreigner coming to the country and want to come and visit the ancestral world. Oh, it's, it's free to anyone, you know. It's, it's a resource so, for so, the so which means that you did all of this out of your own pocket then? I did. And that's why my pocket's a little flat. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell us, what can, what can we do to support you as a channel? Well, um, we're, we're building a resource center, as she mentioned. I can show you it's a very big building, and mm. we put all of the pennies and dollars we could put together in it, and hopefully you get a chance to see it over there. So we'll, um, we'll talk about, you know, we cash app and these different things. Okay. I don't know, maybe we'll put them on um, your, No, please do so. I'm going to get the cash app, and you have a GoFundMe. We can actually start a GoFundMe page for you. Tell us how much you want us to raise for you. Well, we've calculated that to finish that resource center, because it's two levels, library, everything, it's going to be about $40,000. So I think I'm going to use my channel to raise $20,000, which wow. means that we've taken half of your wow. burden off, right? That would kill you, us. Please, don't, you guys should not disappoint me. Oh. This year is the year of charity, and whatever he has been doing here, he has been doing it out of charity. And if I'm here, we have to make it possible. The GoFundMe page is going to be in the uh, description box. It has nothing to do with me. The team will create it. All the money will go to, into his bank account. And please, when the money comes, let us know. I'm going to come back here. And then you tell us that, OK, this is the money that you got. And what am I never took a dollar well, out what, of it. What we'll even do in that case is what I've been trying to do mm. is we just itemize everything that is bought with the money. So we know cement is 48, 49, probably going up now to 50 CD a <laughs> yeah. bag. So if it's a uh, thousand bags, you know, uh, we know what it is and <laughs> do the math. So right through everything, the electricity, all of it will be itemized so you have full visibility. 
So Thank there you. won't be any confusion about Thank you. you know where the money who, went. Who was the first man to be on the wall? The first one happened to be Samora Michelle. Why Samora Michelle? Samora Michelle because I, I just happened to have been reading about him at the time, <laughs> actually. And uh, I've always admired his strength as a young uh, freedom fighter mm. uh, against the Portuguese, in this case, in Mozambique. Mm. So he was the very first one drawn, but very soon after, within days, I started having, I had eight different artists. So if you get a look at some of them, you'll see different kinds of styles. So some are abstract, some are very, um, you know, detailed. So, and, you know, we pay the artists and, and, and we pay to try to keep it, 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 you know, looking good for the students. If I ever had a hole in my room, I only have two people on it. And I'm seeing one of them right here, Thomas Sankara. We've never had any African president like this guy. I mean, if you want to argue, it's all right. And Kwame Nkrumah, of course, these are the two people that, for me, I love and cherish. I have been to the, the gravesite of Thomas Sankara. Really? In 2008. And I saw a young boy standing, saluting, mm. at the bottom of the gravesite. Mm. We had to walk across a rubbish heap to get there. My mm. wife was with me. Mm. And I told her when I saw that young boy, he looked like he was about 12. He saluted and he walked away. I said, Thomas Sankara's children and grandchildren are still there. After you grew up, what did you do? Well, I didn't like the fact that black people were treated so bad. We weren't allowed to go where we wanted, live where we wanted, or even eat where we wanted. We tried to change things, but the white American government wouldn't even let us vote, but we tried. You know, I, I checked through the wall and I never saw these two people. Uh -huh. and apparently, they are actually the gateway to the main <laughs> wall. <laughs> Why Marcus and Carmen Kruma are in here? Hey, that's, uh, well, to me, Marcus Garvey kind of embodies what we've been talking about. And the more I read of Garvey, the more I, I realized he was where my heart was, you know. Garvey basically was saying that until we build something of power and consequence on the African continent, we're just going to be struggling everywhere around the black world. And I think the longer I live, the more I think that is right. So I think we really have to f focus on that. Plus, Mar Marcus Garvey had the largest black organization that the world has known with, the UNIA, Ooh. Universal Negro Improvement Association. So a lot of people don't realize that. But I think reading philosophies and opinions of Marcus Garvey will clear up a lot for a lot of well-meaning uh, African people. Now we know uh, the children usually know who Nkrumah is, of course, being here in Ghana, so I don't have to go too far into the explanations. However, for some of the teachers and all, I also like for them to read this quote, which has to do with uh, uh, Kwame Nkrumah reading and knowing all of these big brain Europeans, but the one who really fired his enthusiasm uh, was Marcus Garvey. So Marcus Garvey had the Black Star line. And so a lot of times when you see the Black Star, even the football team, you know, some of these ideas came, you know, from Garvey. And certainly a lot of the Pan-African uh, leanings that Nkrumah absorbed also came from Garvey. So it helps in a way because most of the people have never heard of Marcus Garvey. Garvey. But this gives them some context. Because they say, well, if our man Kwame Nkrumah, who we all know, I uh, looked up to the man and you know we're watching the Black Stars football team yeah. not knowing that that Black Star, we were even driving the Kantanka, I was looking at that. And the Black so Star, the, yeah. Well actually it's silver. But silver. You know, <laughs> <laughs> so what you're seeing is three levels. We're not sure how we'll use the top level yet, mm. uh, but the first level is going to be our library. So we had a lot of pledges for books and things that we're gonna do. So unfortunately it will have to be a resource library where you can't really take the books out because there's no addresses to track them. Mm. But the idea is for the students to be able to come in, digitize everything we can, we'll download it on a PDF file, they can take it away. If they don't have that, then they can print it there mm. for just a few pesos, then they can take a, start building their own books page by page. So that's what we'll be doing here with the students. Uh, we tried to get something started, but we really needed the space to do it efficiently. 
The second level is, is what we're calling our multi-purpose resource area. And that area is for, for instance, I've had more than a hundred and something children through this past week. Mm. Now I would wow. love to bring them, but that was during the week. But I would love to bring them on Saturday morning and then we take someone on the wall and then we uh, go into detail for maybe two or three hours Saturday morning with the students who we can bring. We've been working on this building for at least four years, Whoa. three or four years, yeah. Well, well I say that done. what you're trying to do is to <clears throat> model of uh, changing the education system in Ghana. Well, we'd love to do that, but you know, do we really have access to the people who would change the actual education system? But until we get there, we don't have any excuse for not having our own materials. So for instance, uh, my daughter who's standing here, uh, you know, she just had to finish an exam or a quiz or whatever. You know, what are all of the benefits of colonialism? And there's a long list. And the more of those you get, the higher your grade is. Mm -hmm. So I just was talking to a man yesterday who was in his 50s, and he told me here in Ghana, he took those same, had that same, I don't know about you. No, it's the same way. You see, and so there's a long list of benefits of colonialism, and then some short things about the drawbacks. Yeah. But we can't just, you know, teach our children this generation after generation and expect us to rise. I would say you've been here since 2004. Yes, Definitely, sir. you've seen a lot of opportunities in Africa. Mm -hmm. What are the things that you've seen that you think your fellow brothers and sisters in the diaspora can come and grab? Well, this is a very important point for me because I feel that you have to have some kind of mission in mind to come in in Africa. Mm. We're talking, we're Garveyites, or we believe that Marcus Garvey's vision of building something powerful and strong. Well, if you're going to do that, you have to do it through the people, mm. and the people are the children. Yeah. So you have to, in my opinion, you should think about that mission seriously even before you come, because if not, you'll get here and you'll run into, you know, all of these logistic problems and, and admin, light off, and you'll be frustrated and you'll be complaining. You want, But if you're here on some kind of larger agenda for your grandchildren and their grandchildren, then some bad roads and some of these things, you don't like them, but they won't bother you so much. So people, I, I encourage them to get the mission in mind of, of building up the race, because you'll never have power anywhere other than Africa. Never, ever, ever. So just get that out of your mind. They can make you a general, they can make you a president, all of that, it doesn't matter. So once you understand that, and you come here knowing that that has to happen even for the generations beyond, mm. then you, you, you'll you know what to do. How can people reach out to you if they want to come to Prom Prom to come check out this ancestral world? Well, there's a, my wife has a Facebook page uh, that you can go to and you can type in either African Ancestry Wall or Malebna's M-M-A-L-E-B-N-A-S restaurant. And when you get to that page, you can see some other possibilities, things we can do. All right, I want to say thank you so much for talking to me. Thank you, I sir. really appreciate your time. I appreciate and, your work. And um, before I go, the link for the Go Farming will be in the description box. You all should help me. We raised $20,000 for him to complete this. I believe that we are an army and we can make this possible. And one thing they just reminded me, Instagram, you know me, I don't know anything. Ah. <laughs> Is Instagram, what's the name of it? African, African Ancestral Wall, well, okay, also All on right. Instagram. So check it out, but most importantly, donate a dollar. Click on the link right now. Thank you so much, and my name is still Mr. Ghana Baby, the one and only annoying village boy from Ghana. I will see you all in the next one. I hear my let me let me finish by hugging you. Then. Oh, thank Aww. you, my darling. Thank you, my dream. Thank you. Aww. Thank you. And I, I want to hug Auntie Vera because this this woman has come to this country with all heart and all good intentions and beautiful energy, and she made this happen, which. I can't say enough about it. I love it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I love it.